Good morning, dead shits. Today, we are doing a, a world first premiere um, because COVID has fucked dead shows. So, we're now YouTubers. Anything to put the money on the table at this point for the food. I didn't say that right. Nor am I going to. Um, so today we have a we have a special special little little thing. Um, this is called Mondays Mondays with Massey. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be taking you through um, my process of recording, uh, writing. Uh, nah, not so much writing. Recording and mixing our demos. So a little disclaimer, might sound shit because I don't put much effort into these demos. I uh, do it mainly for fun and for practice. If it was a, a real project, there wouldn't be as much click bleed. There'd be a lot finer edits. I don't know. If, if you want to listen to the shit that I actually record and mix for other bands and stuff, I'll drop a playlist. So this song is actually a, um, a song that's going to be on our next EP. So this is a little bit of a sneak peek. I don't even think we've played this live. Not that we really can right now. Anyway, uh, this song is called Sleeping Without You. Um, it's got a real Dear Seattle vibe because when I wrote it, which I think was like a year and a half, two years ago, it's when I was knee deep in my Dear Seattle phase. So it's got a bit of a, an Australian accent on it at parts, which I try not to do now because apparently it sounds like I sing in cursive and Darcy will cancel me. First things first, um, I'll just listen to the intro. So, what I typically do first is... Where is it? Where is it? I've hidden it because I didn't like it. Show and make active. I always, without doubt, um, do a guide acoustic guitar. Uh, just set up a microphone in front of me. Play the song to the click. Um, just to get, like, a recorded version. Like, a basic, basic, basic recorded version of the song into Pro Tools. So, that way... I can at least program and I can put in my locations of like verses and intros and stuff like that along to that. So that way at least I don't need to focus when I'm programming drums and be like, fuck, am I in the verse now? Am I back into some weird chorus? Fucking what am I doing? So this way it just makes it a lot easier for me. So we always do that. Always sounds like shit. Sounds like the start to a Vampire Weekend song. So, it's good. I don't know. I kind of like Vampire Weekend. I don't like myself for that. Basically, you'll notice, like I've already said, I program the drums myself. Um, the reason that I do this is because, well, this is a small room, um, and I can't fit Darcy's drum kit in here, let alone all the microphones and the stands that I'd need. So, to make it easier on everyone, I, just, I have a sample pack that I use when I'm sampling for... Um, other projects and stuff so I just import them and then I program them for about uh, the first two bars and if I'm happy with that and the flow of that then I just kind of duplicate it uh, for the rest of that section so the drums sound different for the intro for the verse for the pre-chorus I think and then the chorus is kind of like the intro and just kind of changes up throughout the song depending on what the vibe is and what the song implies that the drums need to do so basically I've just kind of got a simple, let me just turn the groups off, simple kick and snare pattern. So it's pretty much the exact same like throughout the whole thing. Like it's just boom, boom, cha, boom, cha, boom, boom, cha, boom, boom, cha, and then it just repeats. Just keeps going on and on. But that's the nice thing about drums because they're repetitive. So yeah, basically I'll just do that for all of the song and then once I've got the vibe right with just the kicks and the snares because really kicks and the snares are the thing that make you dance make you groove so you need to get them right first and then I kind of uh, depending on vibe I like to fuck around with the toms a little bit but they sound like shit on their own because they are programmed and they're sampled so they just sound like 
this worst fucking sound in the world. Um, so that's in the at the end of the pre-chorus, just to add some texture and add some oh fucking shit, something's coming. Then after that, I've got my cymbals, which basically you need to have um, cymbals in the choruses at least because that's what lifts the song. Like it, it's kind of like the I don't know, just makes it feel bigger. I guess in your brain, like you hear a cymbal and you're like fuck. I don't know. I don't know the science behind it, but it sounds good and it makes things sound good too. Yeah, so basically it's pretty much the same for the intro, the chorus and the chorus. And the bridge is a little different, I think. I think it's like... Well, that part's the same, but the rest of it's kind of a bit odd. Yeah, so that's basically me programming drums. Um, and I won't show you the mixing side of it just yet. I'll just give you a rundown of all of the track first. Then afterwards, I just grabbed my shitty Yamaha bass that my dad bought when he was in his little phase of, I'm going to learn how to engineer. I don't know, he just bought some shit and then was like, hey, do you want it? And then I studied it, so I use it. So basically what I do is I just DI my bass, just kind of play along. The bass is always kind of going to be the root note of the song, unless you're going to go something really, really weird and really, really cool, um, which do, we, we, we do. Taj, Taj is a talented little man. Um, but it what I like to make sure that it does is it needs to be in time with the kick and snare pattern. So that way you get the entire rhythm section as a whole really, really tight. That way it just kind of, it helps it feel solid. Like um, one of my favorite engineers, his name's Andy Wallace. He's a little old Monopoly man that um, mixes heavy metal. He, when he mixes, likes to make sure that the song sounds like a fucking freight train coming at you. So that's, that's I guess, what I've tried to adapt. What a lot of engineers kind of use Yeah, so that's just the di would signal. Under it, I've just sent it um, to some like other tracks, which are just um, affecting them a little bit to, I don't know, give it some character. But apart from that, I just played it. Um, he was a little bit out of time, so I didn't want to retake it because with my demos, I just like to kind of one take it and then just edit it if I need to. But usually it's kind of mostly there. I don't really care if it's perfect. I just want to really be able to listen to it on the way to and from work and go, hey, here's an idea for a part and kind of like do some of the producing on it before we take it to the studio. So that way we've kind of like cut down on time and then we can actually spend it doing shit that's worth doing. Also kind of saves our magnificent engineer Jack um, the trouble of doing even more work. So if I just kind of have some ideas, slimming down the song, cutting things out, or I have parts that I know that I want in there that are like little layers and stuff like that instead of writing it in the studio, then that just kind of helps time saving. And then if we save enough time, then I don't know, we just send it through gear, I guess. So after I do bass, obviously, I go into guitars. Um, so here, I think... Oh, yeah, well, what I used to do is I used to do like... Um, a little more complex guitar setup than I do now. Uh, at the moment with my guitar setups for all, all of our demos, I just use one mic, an SM57, put it in the sweet spot between the tweeter and the cone and just kind of have at it. Move it closer if I want it to be a little bit more um, subby. If I want it to be thinner, move it away and then just fuck with the EQ on the amp. Um, which I've just got this shitty little, shitty little crate amp that I've had since I was six. Um, doesn't sound great, but it does the job. Uh, basically, here I've got two microphones on the guitar cabinet. I've got, I think this top one's going to be an SM57, which is smack bang on the tweeter, which gets all that like really, really harsh, bright stuff. And then this one down here, Audio 2, which I was just too lazy to rename, is this microphone, um, the NT2A on the cone. Um, and the reason that I do that on my commercial records 
is because my engineer Jack, who I actually work for as an assistant in the studio, was talking to me about how he likes to do that because um, then you have a dark and a bright microphone and then you can kind of do broad strokes of EQ just with leveling of those two microphones. So if you want the guitars to be a little bit harsher, a little bit brighter, you just turn the SM57 up. Um, or if you want it to be darker and a little bit more wolfy, then you just turn the other one up. Um, and I really, really liked that. And I like the option of being able to do that if I need to. So um, I just started doing that. And I do that in all of my commercial projects, just not the demos, because I couldn't give a fuck. Basically, I've just got the chords going. This one's the left rhythm. This one's the right rhythm. Yeah, so they're just playing the chords, I guess. I typically like to have one guitar um, a little bit brighter in the high mids and a little bit... Um, I, I like to boost a little bit in the high mids and cut a little bit in the low mids. And then on the other one, do the opposite. So boost in the low mids, cut in the high mids. And um, that way, it like, kind of creates some differentiation between each guitar, um, which... No, add some interest, add some character to each guitar and lets you be able to say, oh, these guitars are doubled a lot easier than it was the same guitar, same amp, and you're just playing it twice. It just sound like a really messy guitar. Um, and what I like to do is I like to have different settings on the amp, different settings on my Super Overdrive, which this is the only pedal that I use for demos because... Like I said before, I couldn't give a fuck. If I can, I have different guitars as well because different guitars have different character. Um, then down here, I have different lead lines. So, oh yeah, I like that one. Just kind of soft in the backgroundy kind of a thing. Um, the reason I've got that in there is I didn't actually write that part. I was playing it um, on an acoustic guitar at Daisy's place one day. And he came out with an acoustic guitar and just started playing that along to it. And I was like, oh, fuck yeah, this is sick. And I'm going to skip this one for now. And I'm going to go to this. So this is my favorite thing to do in rock songs at the moment. Um, and it has been for a little while now. It's just adding like octave guitars. Um, just either harmonizing with the chords or like just following along with the chords. And just adds a little layer and it's really, really interesting. Um, so that by itself sounds like this. It's kind of scratchy, it's kind of annoying, but that mixed in kind of marries up really, really well with the rhythm guitars. Kind of sounds a little bit more menacing, a little bit more, a little bit darker, a little bit a little bit more sad, which I really, really like. Down here, I've just got a little interesting riff that I wrote um, for the second pre-chorus, just to make it different from the first pre-chorus. Yep, that's literally just a layer. Um, then here, uh, it's what I've called a solo, but it's, it's the most basic solo that I've ever written. Yeah, so that's the solo, and it plays in the outro um, chorus as well, which is kind of cool. Um, and yeah, those are mostly my layers. With my guitars, I try not to have too many layers, because then it can get a bit muddy, it can be a little bit hard to mix. Well, there's only so much that your ears can hear, and if you have like everything up at the same level, then it's just going to be kind of hard to create something a bit more dynamic, have like like change the vibe of the track dependent on the section it's just going to be hard if you have heaps and heaps of stuff in there so i like to have like rhythm guitars like an octave layer um a couple of lead lines and a solo anything more than that um i don't know it just kind of it's it's just a bit hard you know unless it's like you've written the song around it having heaps and heaps of stuff i'm just no scott horsecroft with his seven guitars now i've got my lead vocals which my lead vocals, um, 
Breathe deeper. They sound like that. I just sing the words that I wrote in my bedroom. And that's that. And I don't like to do too many takes. Usually with my vocals, I just do two takes. Make the best one my lead vocal. Make the worst one my double vocal. And then just kind of have it as a layer for choruses or little bits that I want a little bit of a, like that kind of a vibe. Um, and here, I'm not sure what this part is. Oh, I think I know what that is. Yeah, okay, that was me doing falsetto because I thought it sounded cool. This is all you get to hear, soloed. Nothing. It's fucking terrible. I wish I never did it. I want to delete it, but I've already sent the fucking demo off when we've already started recording so not a lot you can do at this point here i have my gang vocals which i fucking love gang vocals it's like it's like the band's invitation for the audience to start singing along fucking getting wild uh, i'd imagine that all american rejects whenever they play gives you hell at um a show the gang vocals part in that would fucking go off everyone would be screaming it so that's what I like to think of when I'm putting gang vocals in a song. Um, like, what part do I want the entire crowd to be singing? Like, if I could have them all singing. It doesn't always happen. Sometimes it does. But that's, that's the vibe that I go for. Nothing compares to sleeping without you. Which kind of sounds shit. I don't know, I wish I had a bigger room, and I wish I had more people to do it, but, you know, COVID, hard times, so I was just kind of like, I put my microphone at the end of a room, and I just did, like, the take four times, and then I just put them all together, tuned them, and then put some effects on them, and then that was it, and then down here, I have some atmospheric little things, um, these are my oohs and ahs which I like because it kind of creates a little bit more of a soundscape. And especially since it's in the outro of the song, it just kind of, it, it creates this this world opening up kind of a vibe, which I really, really like. I, I find it really, really inviting. And I love putting oohs and ahs in all of our demos if I can. Um, if, it, if it doesn't need it, then it doesn't, doesn't make it in. Yeah, it hardly ever makes it into the finished product, which I'm always so fucking sad about. But there's nothing we can do. Yeah, I think it's really, really pretty, and I like it, but I don't know, I guess Jack doesn't sometimes. I don't know. So now we'll get into the actual way that I mix it. Um, so I actually mix things a lot differently now. I have a template of um, different things that I use. Like, I have some guitar effects tracks at the bottom. Um, I have a lot more um, vocal processing um, going on. Um, I have more drum processing going on. I have some more bass processing going on. I just have more going on. Um, but, you know, this was, this was before I learnt the way. So, I just kind of lazily made do. Um, so, up here, I've just got a little bit of compression and EQ. Just rolling off the bottom end, making it a little bit, um, making the snare feel a little bit less muddy. And I've just got this, I think, lightly tapping at it. Um, but it's got a slow attack and a fast release to make the snare sound a bit more violent and a little faster. See how it sounds. Sounds like a snare drum. Sick. Um, so over here, I've got a drum auxiliary and a drum parallel compression, which if you don't know much about audio, like the drum auxiliary is my clean, the drum parallel is, it's extremely compressed and has distortion on it, just adds character. Um, my bass um, tracks, this one's usually just clean with a little bit of pokiness in the top end or high mids, just to kind of make it a little bit. I don't know, it, it pokes out in your ears, which means that you can hear it better in the mix. Um, then my bass sub, which isn't really a sub, but I've just called it that, um, just boosts at 110 hertz, which is very low. Then my bass distortion, I've just got a bass distortion plug-in on it, Sansamp. This comes for free, but it's fucking brilliant. And then I've got 
each of these guitars doing what I said before, cutting a little bit in the low mids, boosting a little bit in the high mids, and over here it will be the exact opposite. Yeah, so the guitar right is doing the opposite boosting and cutting to the guitar left. Um, then over here I've just got some overall EQ that I'm doing which is just kind of boosting the high end a little bit or the just boosting the high mids a little bit and cutting the low mids just to kind of make it a little bit less bouncy and um, a little bit more violent. Um, here I've just kind of got it kind of compressing just so that way the guitars kind of glue together. Um, and then my soft lead I've got a distortion I've got a reverb on it I've EQ'd it going in and I've just cut a lot of the high mids to make it a little bit woofy and boosted the low mids to make it woofy as well and then here I've boosted the top end after the um, reverb to add breath to the actual reverb but I've also cut a lot of the low end out to um, I don't know reverb it just adds so much woofiness and it's just annoying. Um, so over on this guitar hard lead, I've done fairly similar things. Um, the octave guitars, I've put a limiter on it. I've EQ'd a little bit to make it a little bit more violent. And I've added a distortion on there. Um, the little riff just has a little bit of a compressor on it. And just kind of making it a little bit woofier, making it a little bit meatier i guess um and then over to the vocals um with my vocal processing i have well usually i have my clean channel i have my parallel compression and what's not on here is my parallel reverb short my parallel reverb long um a parallel distortion and my parallel delay which i all just kind of um, level to feel right with the track um, but this was pre me being smart so up here I've got a compressor and I've got a limiter this is so that way the parts where I go really really loud match the parts where I'm kind of softer so that way it's just kind of like the one level throughout the whole track and you're not going the fuck did you say then that is going into my favorite vocal EQ ever the API 550B, the reason I love it is because it's got 20K, which you can't really actually hear 20K, but if you fucking boost it, then it boosts some of the lower frequencies as well in like a curve up to 20K. Um, so it just kind of adds some breath and it's nice. Uh, I cut out 1.5 to make the vocal a little bit less pokey and a little less honky and add 700 hertz because it makes it a little bit meatier. And I've got a de on it to kind of get rid of the harsh sibilance on it. This vocal track is feeding these two auxiliary tracks, um, which the clean just has a reverb on it and the parallel compression has a distortion and compressor and then another distortion after it. Um, then my double vox basically has the exact same settings as my lead vocal. Um, and I've got a double clean and a double parallel. Um, for those two tracks as well. My gang vocals have just um, a reverb on it and an EQ just to kind of make it a little bit woofier, like you're in the back of a room. Um, in hindsight, I'd probably make it a little bit pokier because it just kind of feels odd it being so woofy. And then the ooze, I literally just, yeah, it's the default preset for this plugin. And like it's it's got the same decay it's got the same settings as when you first open it i just threw it on fucked with the mix and then left it so what i like to do after i do all that shit is i i get like a solo groups at a time so i can solo all my drums and then i get levels in the drums themselves then i solo the bass and then i get my bass levels in themselves then i do the same with the guitars um so that way the like rhythms are only really slightly quieter than the solo and the octave guitars are kind of on par or tucked beneath the rhythm um, and the leads just poking out a little bit. Um, I like to get all those levels just in the guitars, just listening to the guitars, um, which not a lot of engineers do, but there's a reason why I do that. 
Um, then I'll do the same with vocals. And then they all send to these ones over here, which this is um, controlling all of my drums, all of my bass, all of my guitar, and all of my vocals. So then what I do is I basically do my final mix or my final mixing stage um, from these four faders here. Um, so if I want the drums overall to be louder, then I just push that. If I want the bass overall to be quieter, I just tuck that down and like just kind of do shit like that. Um, if it's if I'm pushing stuff and it's like annoying me because one specific like guitar part is too loud, then I'll I'll just go over there and I'll just turn it down a little bit. It's not it's not a massive deal. Um, this just kind of like makes my life easier at the end because I can just make broad strokes once I've just kind of like fiddled with all the individual stuff. After that, I send it to my um, mix print track and I record that in, which I, I don't really need to do that. I just do it as preparation for when I have some really good um, compressors um, when I save up enough money. And then I'll have to like print it because it'll need to send out of the computer um, into whatever I'm running it into and then send it back in to my mix print and then it'll print the signal that's coming from my gear, not just whatever's in Pro Tools. So that's more or less just preparation. It doesn't need to be there. But yeah, once I do that, then that's pretty much the mix. I send it to the band and they ignore me for about a week. And then one of them goes, hey, we got an email. I think that's it. Thank you for listening to me. If you got bored, don't let me know. I don't care. If you enjoyed it, leave a comment. I do care. If you have any specific questions, then drop a comment or send a message to the band account. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook and check out our Spotify. Most importantly, check out the Spotify. Anyway, I'll let you listen to the song now. Say yes.
front, there's no one behind you. All I've got in this empty box up on my shoulders. I can't believe I fucked it.